Hi folks, thanks for joining me in another episode of My Teacher Told Me. I'm your host Elliot Kimmel. In the last video I showed you how to make a fingerprint visible just using a pencil, putting your finger into the lead, putting a piece of tape over that, and viewing it under a magnifying glass. Currently, uh, that's obviously not a very standard method for, say, the police to use. Um, there's three or four uh, decent techniques that they like to use uh, using different chemicals. One is called ninhydrin. Another one is using common super glue. And then there's the iodine fingerprint technique. And that's the one that I want to talk to you about today. Um, in order to understand this, uh, we're going to have to look at a little bit of general biology. Have a look at this picture here. This image shows salivary glands. Now, a gland is a structure that is composed of a, a collection of cells that create chemicals, secretions, um, that are delivered either outside of the body or into the body using tubes or ducts. So salivary glands release saliva into your mouth and that helps to lubricate the food so that it's easier to swallow or to help you taste it. Now, another example of a gland is the sweat gland, which releases sweat onto the surface of the body to help cool the body down. But the gland that we're interested in today is called a sebaceous gland. And sebaceous glands tend to uh, be found around hairs and they release this fluid, which is a fat or lipid-like fluid that helps to lubricate the hair, um, keep it smooth and soft. But these sebaceous glands are also found on your face, on your forehead, and on your neck. And those are the ones that we're going to deal with because they release a fatty chemical and that fatty chemical reacts with iodine. So this is called the iodine fingerprint technique or the iodine fuming technique to be a little bit more specific. If you're like me, you tend to touch your face a lot. All right, we always hear that we shouldn't be doing that. It's not good for our skin, but you know, you're touching your face, you're sitting there writing something and you know, you're cradling your head, touching your face, and you get a lot of fats or lipids from these sebaceous glands on your hands. So how can we make our fingerprints visible? Well, now we're gonna to turn to the chemistry section and we're gonna be dealing with iodine. So I've got a little jar of iodine here. Now, a warning, iodine gas is, is very dangerous. It's toxic and should not be inhaled. So if you get a hold of some iodine, as I did from my chemistry lab at work, um, you need to be very, very careful with it. So the thing about iodine is it exists normally as a solid. I mean, just look it up on the periodic table there over with the halogens. Most of those halogens, you know, chlorine, fluorine and stuff, they're gases, right? Iodine exists as a solid, but when iodine is heated, instead of going from a solid to a liquid and then to a gas, that's something like, say, you know, if you've got a solid block of ice, right? You heat the ice, you know that it melts into water and you heat it enough. Um, it's going to turn into a gas or a vapor. Well, iodine goes directly from a solid right to a gas, and that process is called sublimation. Now, we are going to do a technique where we heat the iodine just very gently, and it's going to go right from, a, right from a solid to a gas. It's going to sublimate, and what happens with the fingerprints, with the lipids, if I rub my, if I rub my forehead here and I get some, some lipid or fat on my finger, what's going to happen is the iodine gas is going to go into the fat or the lipid, and iodine gas um, will react with it and show up as a yellow or brown color. And we're going to be able to visualize the fingerprint. Now, um, in terms of using this for forensics, I mean, it can be done, but the problem is um, the iodine vapors will eventually disappear from the fingerprint, so it's not you know, a permanent situation unless you use a special fixative uh, to make it more permanent. All right, so we're going to get set up here with the chemistry aspect, and I'm going to do the little demonstration, so hang on. All right, let's do it. So what I've got assembled here are basically the piece of equipment I will need for this demonstration. This is a flask, it's called an Erlenmeyer flask, and I'm simply gonna use that to help support this uh, large test tube that I've got here, and I've got a rubber stopper as well that I'm gonna use to put inside it. So I'm gonna be supporting the test tube in the Erlenmeyer flask like that. I mean, but you could use a test tube stand for that. And of course, I've got the iodine crystals that I'm gonna show you in a moment. I've got a little scoopula here that I'm gonna use to take out a bit of iodine. And I've also got these pieces of paper here. This is chromatography paper. You could use filter paper. You want to use something preferably that's nice and porous so that it can pick up the, the fats in your fingerprint. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. 
Um, I am going to open up the iodine here and I'm going to show you a little bit of this. I don't know how well it will show up, but I'll do it. Do what I can. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see this very well. But I've got some iodine crystals on there. I actually don't need very much. I'm just going to put a few of these crystals into the test tube here. I'm being careful not to inhale it. There we go. I've got the iodine in the test tube. I'm going to put the test tube back in the flask and I'm going to cover it up because iodine only needs a very little bit of heat. Even just shaking that test tube around is enough to create some you know, thermal agitation uh, to cause the iodine to ch change from salt to a gas to sublimate. All right, iodine over there, here we go. Now, um, you're not gonna be able to see this very well, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this piece of paper here and I'm going to take, say, my thumb because we looked at my thumb in another video and we saw that it had a nice whirl on it. Now, I don't remember which thumb I used and your fingerprints can vary from, from finger to finger or thumb to thumb in this case. I'm gonna rub my forehead, all right, and I've got a nice imprint right there. I'm gonna put that onto the, onto the filter paper here. So it's just going to press down like that. I'm going to remove it. Now, we may have to do this a couple times, but you can't see anything. It's like invisible, right? So I'm now going to take this. I'm going to put that into, actually, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to fold one of the edges back, and this is going to fit over the lip of the test tube. So here we go. I'm going to put that into the test tube, stick it down and I am going to cap it. So we now have the paper in the flask. I've got the iodine crystals at the very bottom. Now I'm going to have to heat this up so I can sublimate the iodine. So let me do that. All right, I've got a lighter here. And even without using the lighter, I can already see there's a little bit of iodine vapor in here starting to attach to the fingerprint. But I'm going to heat it up even more. Just going to heat the bottom of the flask. There's going to be enough heat in there. All right. And the iodine is going to start to sublimate, turn into a gas. Let me do it again. All right, now I've collected a lot of carbon on the bottom of that. I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. And we're going to let the iodine vapors, which are going to come up, and they're going to go and attach to the fat that was in my skin that went onto my fingerprint. So how's it looking? All right, well, I decided I'd take out the test tube and hold it in my hand so we can speed things up a bit. I'm going to actually heat the iodine directly just a little bit. That's going to speed up the process and get it to turn into a vapor and um, I can already see a little bit of a purplish gas being formed. You don't want to inhale that, all right? And we should see a fingerprint forming in a couple minutes, so I'll, 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 I'll stop it and then we'll wait and see how it goes. Well, it's been about a minute that I've let this sit, and you can definitely see there is something forming on the filter paper. You see that brown smudge there? The iodine gas came up and attached to the fat that was from my skin that went onto my fingerprint and you can definitely see an impression of the fingerprint. Now we're going to take a closer look at this with a magnifying glass. All right, so there you go. You can definitely see a fingerprint there, right? All the brown region is the iodine which attached to the fats. It's a little bit difficult to actually tell um, the pattern of the fingerprint, but if you did a really nice uh, print, you could probably tell. One of the things you may be wondering is why didn't the paper turn brown? And that's because paper is polar, if you know a little bit of chemistry, but the iodine and the fat is nonpolar, so the, so the iodine really only goes onto the fatty parts of the fingerprint. So there you go, another technique to view fingerprints. Hope you enjoyed this. See you again soon.